getting into a Justice Thursdays conversation and uh, coming off of that our guest is already seated in the studio this morning and as we look at conversations around land they're big ones they are emotive ones they seem to engulf everybody when we discuss them and this morning the mandate of the land acquisition tribunal is what is up for discussion and dr nabil orina who is the chairperson of the land acquisition tribunal is here with us this morning on this justice thursday conversation good morning good morning how are you fine thank you karibu sana to kenya's biggest conversation thanks for having me uh we're getting into it this morning and um we'll welcome people with a proverb and ct does the honors the whole of this week the week of course ending tomorrow uh, proverbs are from the country of Malawi, formerly Nyasa land, formerly before that former uh, British Central Africa Protectorate, currently Malawi. They have a president. They do. Yes, they do. Mm. It's actually called Lazarus Chakwera. Mm. They even have a vice president. They don't have the burden of a deputy president, it's just a vice president. Saulo Chilema is his name. And then we see what you did there. Yeah, we saw. <laughs> not, we got it. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, <laughs> you may right. carry on. <laughs> well, speaker, mm. of a speaker. Now they've mixed it up nicely. Mm. It's a lady by the name of Catherine Otani Harry. Mm. All right. Who oh, they got the independence around the same time we did. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one could say that we are age mates. You and Malawi. Me, oh, Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm older than Malawi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. Me. The proverb for the day. Ants die in sugar. Ants. A-N-T-S. Not auntie. Mm. Not your father's sister. Ants die in sugar. Simple, straightforward proverb. For a Thursday, the day before Friday. Not bad. Not bad. Dr. Rina, does it make some sense to you? Yeah. Mm. Um, ants die in sugar. Uh, basically, I, I would say it as um, that which you like so much sometimes can be your downfall, can lead to your downfall. That's how I would say it. Ouch. Ah, so beautifully executed. <laughs> I mean, see, I thought it was a simple proverb. Can you see how it has been simply explained? And to the point. Such a truth, though, man. Mm. 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 The thing that you like so much can kill you. Mm. Yeah. The thing you actually enjoy <laughs> too so much. much. Of it. Mm. Too much. Yeah. Too much of it. Too much of it. Mm. Kill you. Too much of it can kill you. Mm. Okay. You can be incensed with it. It can take over your being. It can make you do things that, you know, you would normally not do naturally. Uh, and then you could die. And we've seen that with a lot of land issues in this country, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, people normally say that the issue of land incenses people to the point whereby sometimes we are bereft of all proper thinking and it's a really emotive issue the one thing that you can hold on to and um, even as we look at that and those matters the land acquisition tribunal apparently is a body and we want to start to figure out okay yeah. what exactly is that what is, before we even look at the mandate of it and what you do, what exactly is the Land Acquisition Tribunal? Okay, thank you for that. Um, I, would, I would explain the, what the Land Acquisition Tribunal is by, first of all, j taking a step back mm. and um, asking what is this acquisition that we're talking about. The acquisition that is in the law is the compulsory acquisition, which then now necessitates the, uh, the Land Acquisition Tribunal. <laughs> Under the Constitution, the right to own property is protected and can only be uh, deprived, someone can only be deprived of his right to own property in accordance with Article 40, sub Article 3, if it is compulsorily acquired by government, which means that if uh, uh, the government has a public interest for which it wishes to take some private land to pursue the public interest, then it can compulsorily acquire your property. So the, the constitutional provision, which is Article 40 sub Article 3, states that then if government has to do this, there has to be a law you know, to enable it to, to do this and there has to be recourse for someone who's affected 
the the property owner mm -hmm. in order to you know um uh, to go before a court of law and uh, to test whether the acquisition uh, is in compliance with the law and that is where the land acquisition tribunal comes in so the land act then it gives the mandate of uh, listening to grievances arising from from compulsory acquisition of private land by government to the land acquisition tribunal so if uh, a government has an intention to compulsorily acquire your land uh, say to to build a school or to you know to build a road uh, then you have a right to come before this uh, the land acquisition tribunal to either say that the process of acquiring this land was uh, not proper mm -hmm. or the purpose for which this land was acquired was not a public purpose uh, uh, similarly you can approach the tribunal and say because the requirement is that if government takes your land compulsorily and, and this is a concept uh, that is known as eminent domain then they have to give you just compensation they mm -hmm. have to compensate you for the land they've taken so you can also come to the tribunal and say that uh, government expressed an interest in taking my land uh, but the offer of compensation they have given me is not sufficient hence now the tribunal uh, can resolve the questions mm. that uh, you, you bring, you bring up yeah. you've, you've used the term compulsorily quite some yes and compulsorily to me appears like something that you have no choice but to do in what circumstances would government come and take your land or at least express interest to take your land compulsorily um the constitution states that government can only take private land can only deprive a private owner of their land if there is a, a public interest or there is a public function for which that land is required so government cannot take your private land so that you can sell it to someone else mm -hmm. your private land can only be taken if uh, there's need to expand the road mm. or like need the SGR. To, yeah to okay. put an sgr station mm -hmm. and government requires that land so uh, and government has uh, that eminent domain in terms of uh, you know of acquiring land in this in this regard so it comes to you and says um this land would be required to expand a uh, public facility that is here and uh, uh, by acquiring it then we will compensate you to put you as close as possible to the position in which you are you could probably acquire land somewhere else or in the alternative it's also provided in the law that the government can offer you alternative land as compensation if it's acceptable to you mm -hmm. so that then that land is taken and it's used for the public purpose for which it was intended to be used. Mm -hmm. So it's the government that determines that the land you own and where it's domiciled is useful to them in the manner that is prescribed by law, isn't it? So I can't tell the government, look, I have land, please come and acquire it compulsorily because I think it would be good for this school. I, I can't do that. No, you can't do that. Actually, the process of, of compulsory acquisition of land um, Start be, begins from a, an acquiring entity. What is uh, a, an acquiring entity, which can be either a county government or a national government, writing to the National Land Commission and uh, saying, "We wish to compulsorily acquire this particular piece of land because uh, it will be useful for us for you know ABC function." And then <coughs> the National Land Commission has to satisfy certify that indeed the purpose for which the national government or the county government wishes to acquire the land is for a public use mm -hmm. and then it initiates the process of now compulsory acquisition so you cannot approach government to say that uh, i wish you know to sell or to give my land to you can you refuse if government comes to you and wants to compulsorily um, acquire your land because it is yours as a private individual can you refuse you can't refuse if uh, all the you know constitution and legal criteria has been met mm. and that is that uh, the land is uh, for a particular public purpose the procedure for acquiring has been followed to the letter and the compensation that has been given to you is just compensation and that is why uh, because it's um, it's a right issue a rights issue uh, your right to own property and that's why there is an avenue for you 
now to to complain to say for instance you can you, you have a right to go to court and say uh this uh, this acquisition of land this compulsory acquisition of land should uh, just be nullified because it was not undertaken properly because i do not think the purpose for which government wishes to acquire this land is not uh you know for public use mm. but you cannot refuse if the the criteria set in the constitution and the law has been satisfied what you're saying or rather what i hear you to be saying is that there is a tribunal right yes the tribunal presupposes that somewhere along the line in this clearly laid out situation you've described there will be malpractices indeed uh you know the the, the fact that you have an avenue to to ventilate an issue you could have um, is evidence that uh, along the line the procedure might not be followed to the letter or someone might uh, you know undertake a shortcut in uh, acquiring your property or probably uh, the intended use of this land is not uh, for public use or the, the the amount that you've uh, that the government has proposed to to offer you in compensation does not meet the criteria of just compensation so uh essentially that is why the the, the tribunal exists not necessarily that uh you know there could be foul play mm. but just to check just as uh you know uh, a, a mechanism to check that everything is done in accordance with the law because uh you know your right to land uh, should should essentially be upheld and respected so for someone to take away your land then you must it must check all the boxes dr beyond the extrajudicial killings in this yes. country road accidents death by disease deaths that arise over land issues in this country are significant indeed yes so there are errors that can be said to be human errors a mistake was made someone did not intend to but then who are we to speak you understand these matters yeah. the matters that one comes across on a daily basis as you mm. go about your daily business what are the ones which are preeminent what are the issues that keep coming up over mm. and over and over again with regards to this very thing we're discussing <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, you know, it's, it can also be an issue that uh, when government was coming to acquire this land and trying to identify the ownership of this, uh, you know, the particular land that is being uh, compulsorily acquired, they did not identify the correct ownership. You know, the person was identified as the owner is not, you know, uh, the, the owner of the property that that is one of the errors uh, that uh, unfortunately also might occur but then the tribunal's mandate may not uh, extend to determining uh, disputes over ownership but there could also arise another issue where uh, it's stated in the acquisition that uh, the the amount of property the amount of land that has been acquired is of a particular acreage but the land that has, has been acquired is more than uh, the land that the government has stated uh, would be required for the, the particular purpose. Mm -hmm. It can also be the case that uh, if government comes to you and says, we want to acquire half an acre of your land for expansion of, the, of, um, of a road, but this is a property that you intended to build a house, you know, in a nice compound, you know, and uh, beautify it. Mm -hmm. So the remaining half acreage of the property is useless basically yes. and you'd come to the tribunal to say government should have acquired the whole piece of property because whatever has remained is not fit for the purpose for which i intended to use it for so uh these are some of the issues that can arise in terms of um, you know uh the process and you know what kind of compensation you acquire from uh you know the property that has been uh, compulsorily acquired mm. okay. Let me ask a different question. Yes. What if I want to acquire land from the government? Um, because the government has lots of land. Yes. Um, there, there, there are other mechanisms which are not involved because that is essentially the reverse of compulsory acquisition. Uh, precisely. But now yes. I want to acquire, I want to buy, I want mm -hmm. to pay for it, but it's government land. 
Well, um, there the, are the processes of uh, allotment of, uh, of land, uh, and you would uh, have to apply. And uh, if land wishes to, uh, I mean, if government then is okay to allot you some land, and then you you pay the 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 required rates and rent for a particular period because uh, then that you would get at least at least for a, a property to mm -hmm. do whatever you you you've asked to do with that property let's say for instance you want uh, um it's it's a property near near the port and uh, you you wish to lease it so that you could uh, you know have a go down there and store your, your stuff for for a number of years five ten years the government can list the property to you uh, with certain conditions and you have to comply with the conditions and if you fail to comply with the conditions then they can take the property back okay that that is a transaction that can still be done the same way you can do a private transaction with a you know a private landowner mm -hmm. yeah. i think my question would be so i'm hearing about the tribunal for the first time mm -hmm. uh, and i know a lot of especially young people um mm -hmm. how do we get to you what's the process like if i feel the situation was unfairly done mm -hmm. just explain to me how i get to you okay um indeed uh although the tribunal came about through a, a, an amendment which was referred to as a land value amendment act in the year 2019 the tribunal has only been operationalized this year oh. by my appointment mm -hmm. i'm actually the first chair of the tribunal okay so previously um before the tribunal was appointed <coughs> anybody who was aggrieved still had a right to go before the environment and land court okay you know you would file your your claim there and mm -hmm. the environment and land court should issue a decision actually most of the decisions existing uh that have developed jurisprudence ar around this come from the environment and land court which is of the status of a high court but now uh since the tribunal has been operationalized uh, the first port of call is going to be the tribunal. You cannot go to the environment and land court if you have a grievance from a compulsory acquisition of land. And uh, matters arising out of this, uh, we are going to put out an, uh, an announcement, I think, uh, tomorrow okay. uh, across uh, newspapers as well as uh, it will be shared to other uh, stakeholders on how uh, you can file a claim before uh, the the land acquisition tribunal it will be uh, the filing system is the one that uh, the judiciary uses uh, all claims will be uh, filed virtually mm -hmm. and uh, there will be contacts on someone to assist in case someone uh, you know has challenges in uh, in filing mm -hmm. because now uh, the judiciary has really you know um, gone uh, virtual in terms of uh, filings and uh, uh, so that if anyone has a claim, let's say in any part of the country, you can log into the a digital platform of the judiciary, find uh, under the land acquisition tribunal, be able to upload your documents, mm. and it reflects immediately mm -hmm. um, with the with the secretariat uh, uh, from the uh, registrar of tribunals, who are assisting at least to to manage the administrative bit of it, and then uh, that claim is then is. Uh, transmitted to to the respondents and uh, they put in the responses and then uh once it comes to us then we we do uh, the the next uh, steps mm. uh most of the hearings are going to be virtual oh. you know to 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 ensure that uh, at least there is uh, access accessibility because these uh, tribunals also are part of enhancing access to justice mm -hmm. so that if someone has filed a claim from mombasa we uh, they do not need to struggle that oh the tribunal today is sitting in kisumu right. because there's only one tribunal mm -hmm. uh, composed of three members oh so we're not saying that uh, there's a panel sitting in kisumu mm. kisi nyamira etc so if someone has filed a claim uh you can get a hearing date uh you log in virtually you know we have a claim uh from mombasa from kisumu the same day and they can all be had uh, virtually in um in limited cases, we, uh, the tribunal might have to visit certain uh, areas, you know, yeah. to, mm. to ensure that at least um, there's accessibility. Because uh, sometimes the use of technology can enhance accessibility, but uh, in other cases, you can limit it mm -hmm. because there are people who do not have access to, you know, uh, the proper facilities. So in such instances, then uh, the tribunal can go. 
to to where the uh, the, the, the matters have arisen and they can have a, you know mm. a physical hearing there yeah so that kind of flexibility then ensures that uh you know nobody is uh, is left out from out. accessing the tribunal. okay so you mentioned that uh, the tribunal is relatively young uh about a year just un under a year so have you actually started to hear cases no okay. actually uh i was appointed two weeks ago oh wow oh you're like brand spanking new okay Very. <laughs> <laughs> yes i am so uh but now we have uh put in uh, the the proper mechanisms to ensure that uh, at least uh, parties can file you know developed uh, the, the the proper standards for for filing of the cases and to ensure that at least we were now ready to go in terms of uh receiving cases and hearing them expeditiously mm -hmm. i must note also that um uh the the law that establishes the tribunal gives the tribunal 60 days mm -hmm. to hear and determine matters mm -hmm. and uh you know one of one of the things that uh we've uh, of course we've had a challenge with in this country is uh the long delay in courts mm -hmm. for, for for matters mm -hmm. and uh for for the legislature to have uh you know come up with this tribunal mm. is to ensure that uh, you know there's expeditious uh, you know hearing and disposal of matters and because of the nature of land cases and we already have uh, an environment and land court which has several other land related disputes it's, you yeah. know mm -hmm. as uh, as was stated here that land is very emotive so by removing this component from the environment and land court and putting it in a tribunal and requiring that the matter be heard within uh, a period of 60 days is to ensure that uh, at least there is a quick dispensation of justice sure and yeah. and then also maybe giving rise to the notion that there is quite a lot then in terms of disputes when it comes to individuals and government land i'm looking at access to justice um and we have heard the chief justice numerous occasions talking about we need to simplify access to justice number two we need to then make it widely accessible so those two things simplify it and make let everybody have access now when we'll remove this component of um the government acquiring land from you as an individual from the environment and land court then it occurs to me that perhaps it is a recurrent issue and that there are several issues around this particular component for it to be removed and a tribunal set out solely for this purpose um, um that has happened does that mean that there are very many cases around this particular issue whereby individuals would have an issue with government and how they um, acquired their land um it it is the case that uh the you know even even the constitution by separating the high court from other specialized courts that is the environment and land court and uh, the employment and labor relations court was also trying to ensure that uh, you know each you know court would deal with the specialized matters and ensure that and and uh, you know indeed mm. there is a uh, quick uh, dispensation of justice but when it comes to tribunals and uh, the the land acquisition tribunal and it it contributes to access to justice in in a manner uh, that this is an, a, a judicial organ mm -hmm. but not a very you know formal way of uh, coming to court uh, more of uh, you know an administrative organ to to deal with uh, you know questions that, that are more administrative in nature before you can you can end up in court because then uh if you are dissatisfied with the with the decision of the tribunal you have a right to go to the environment and land court on appeal oh, okay. but only on matters of law mm -hmm. so um tribunals contribute to access to justice because of how they operate in in terms of uh you know regulating their own procedure not strictly following the you know the, the set rules of procedure and evidence uh you know uh strict timelines and 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 this is also in regard to uh, i believe which uh, has been discussed in this show the small claims court yes which uh then was necessitated by the fact that uh they there are some disputes which are of a lesser nature but they are stuck up in you know in the court system so instead of uh, having you know questions about uh, compensation uh, for land that has been compulsorily acquired is stuck up in the court system for years then you put them in a tribunal uh, where someone knows that 
if I'm dissatisfied, I can approach this tribunal and I can have a determination within 60 days. Mm. So that, uh, you know, enhances, uh, you know, access to justice. And because land is a, is a big component of, uh, you know, a, a driver of the economy, then people want to, to know that issues around uh, this uh, land that is being taken away from them um, uh, are quickly resolved and and also because uh, sometimes land uh, w when government wants to acquire your land now uh, it could have been the only property that you had mm -hmm. you know uh, but government has, has said uh, that in their plans they want to to build this infrastructure which will serve the community and the They've taken the only piece of land that you had. You cannot wait for two years uh, before you, 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 you resolve a dispute in regard to how much you should have been paid. I think my question would be, is there plans to have an awareness campaign um, with people in the community, in the grassroots, and which sort of stakeholders would you be looking to collaborate with? Because even thinking about the narrative of... <laughs> Basically, taking government to court mm -hmm. uh, yeah. is not an easy thing. And, and you know how it is, especially in rural areas. Um, people tend to be afraid uh, of going against and just saying, you know, whatever we receive, equal to. You know, we yeah. have that mentality of appreciate what you've gotten. At least you're alive. Because there's that fear, that sense of fear of authority. So I'm curious to know if there's a plan to educate the public uh, that this is accessible and it's also affordable and you're also reachable. Yes, in, indeed, uh, uh, the, the whole aim would be to to reach out to as many stakeholders as possible and we're starting, uh, this is our first official you know reaching out and mm -hmm. trying to uh to do sensitization about the tribunal but then also um what what we will do as a tribunal is to simplify the procedure of mm -hmm. approaching uh, uh if you have a claim and you have an appeal from uh, this compulsory acquisition so that then it's it's as, as accessible as possible not just uh because you can you know come to the tribunal and quickly get your, your issues resolved but then you do not have to go through complicated ways of uh, you know uh, filing pleadings but you can have a, a simple kind of form it, to fill in your, your grievance and uh, you know it's uh, you, you get help to, to get it uploaded online and then we can we can have that uh, that kind of resolved but I agree with you as well that uh, indeed there are certain communities or uh, already we have noted a number of uh, areas where most of these claims are coming from or where there there have been a lot of uh, complaints about uh, the process of acquiring compulsory acquisition and uh, the compensation. So we we have plans of uh, going closer to the people and uh, you know trying to inform them. We are also involving the law society of Kenya okay. because um, as much as uh, we want to everybody to be able to approach this court, uh, mm -hmm. you know, without necessarily having to to find a lawyer, uh, lawyers are also a key component of uh, of justice and access to justice. So we're we're reaching out to them. Um, we are talking to them through the uh, CPDs that is uh, continuing continuing uh, professional development just to also sensi sensitize everyone around uh, the, the, the work of this tribunal and mm. how to access it and um, uh, you know what what to expect from it so how do you access it Daktari? because here we are saying that there could be and it could be in the uh, pr probably looking at a lot of these cases coming from rural Kenya yes right yes. just because of how geographically things are set up mm -hmm. and where folks own land okay so if something happens and you find yourself in a situation where actually, you know what, it's the tribunal that would be able to um, figure this out for me. Where, how do we start? Who do you, do you pick up the phone call? Do you visit a local office? What, how does the process play out? What do you do? Well, um, of course, the, the, the access point is through the judiciary e-filing system. Okay. But uh, we, we accept that, uh, of course, that, is not something that is known to mm. everyone. Mm. So uh, in our notices that we are putting out, we have uh, our court administrators and their personal numbers and their personal emails. You know, for 
persons who have uh, challenges to, you know, a, in terms of the procedure to, to file some of these claims, mm -hmm. to call so that they can get the support that is required. You know, you can be, you know, guided through, you know, uh, how you can get to, to file online and, uh, you know, your, your documents are uploaded because uh, the online filing system is... Um, it's actually a simple one, but it might not be simple to everyone. So uh, by offering this kind of support, then it ensures that uh, whoever is having a challenge uh, uploading or knowing how to file or what kind of document to file, mm -hmm. then they can easily uh, reach out to, you know, to our court support staff okay. uh, to, to, to enable them to do that. And you need to pay to file? There, there is a, a minimum filing fees, which I think is about a thousand pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which uh, is in the system because uh, the system also requires that uh, you have to to pay to upload uh, certain mm -hmm. documents. I want to come off a question that Narima asked because the th the thought of taking government to court is foreboding at best. As you say, <laughs> you want to take my land, and you've already established that. We are not talking about whether you can or cannot. So long as a particular threshold has been met, the government can actually come and tell you, look, we're taking this. We're going to pay you for it, but we're taking it. So we're saying that the tribunal is kind of like a fact checker yeah. to come and say, okay, did we do this, 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 this? If you did, actually, then government can have your land and they're paying you for it. So if you have an issue, we can come and we can go through those facts and we can check. So it is not to dispute whether the government can actually take this land from you what you're disputing or what you're um, adjudicating over is the technicality as to whether they went uh, through due process mm -hmm. whether they uh, took up the responsibility to to do things right that's essentially what we're saying here not questioning whether they can take it or not am mm -hmm. i right yeah that's that, that's correct but you can actually question whether they can take it or not that is the first thing you can question. Okay. You can question whether the purpose for which the government wants to acquire land is a public purpose. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, and and that is a question that uh, can be, you know, determined uh, uh, can come before the tribunal and the tribunal can make a determination on, on whether this was a public purpose and before that before mm -hmm. even the land uh, the government takes your land once this request for compulsory acquisition of land comes to the national land commission mm -hmm. the national land commission is required to put out a notice through gazette mm -hmm. to state that government intends to acquire your property the following are the identified owners of the property. This is the particular property that is required to be uh, compulsorily acquired. And there's a requirement that that notice has to be served on each and every person who's interested. So that is the person who owns the property, the person who's resident on the property. And then after that, there is a public inquiry mm -hmm. where the National Land Commission will come to you, sit down with, with you, uh, listen to your representations about your property, Listen to, you know, uh, representations about how much you think it's worth uh, to be paid and then make a decision. So after that decision has been made, after the National Land Commission has, been, has made a decision that, yes, indeed, uh, because already they have certified that uh, this is uh, the proper, uh, the acquisition is for a public use, then they make a decision on how much you should be paid. Then that is when you can uh, approach the court and say, uh, there is a step that was skipped or the uh, the inquiry about how much I should be paid was not done properly and they left out a number of things. The improvements are done on the property. If you had some structure, they undervalued the structure. How long you've stayed on the property, whether you are resident on the property, were there other people resident on the property. Mm. So those are the, the small details that have to be taken into consideration in order for... Uh, uh, a, a just decision to be reached because the law requires that there has to be just compensation mm -hmm. and the just compensation uh, from the jurisprudence available is that whatever you are paid has to be of a, has to follow the principle of equivalence okay put you as close as possible to the situation you were in before uh, the compulsory acquisition occurred so and also you ha also have to see the the mandate of the tribunal as uh, you know, striking a balance to ensure that uh, the person who has been deprived of property is justly compensated, but also public funds are prudently used so that there is no opportunity 
you know, uh, as was stated in one of the cases called uh, uh, Patrick Musimba, for looting, mm -hmm. for instance, because there could be a ploy to acquire a property which uh, its value to you, uh, you know, uh, would have been 500,000 and someone wants to pay you 5 million. And who are you to happen. refuse? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, so the, the, the tribunal has a mandate to either vary, yeah. uh, quash the whole process, or uphold uh, the whole process by the National Land Commission. Would the tribunal get involved in cases, and this is the question coming from, that, you know, sometimes you're traveling about and you see that uh, um, private companies have installations mm -hmm. on your land. Absolutely. There's something, they maybe pay you something every month kind of thing or per year. Does the tribunal get involved in that and at what level? Um, the tribunal's mandate also extends to what, what I refer to as way leaves mm -hmm. and easements. So what uh, they're talking about... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yes, explain those two things. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, uh, I will start with the first one that they are talking about, oh, yeah. a way leave. Yeah. So if, uh, you know, an, an installation, a telecom company wants to install um, something on your property, uh, you know, let's say a telecom mast, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you have a right to be compensated for that, uh, that installation. Mm -hmm. And that is what is referred to as a way leave. Okay. An easement, on the other hand. Spell that one is? I-S? Easement. I S M I N T. E A E S E A M E N T. E A M E S E N T. Easement. Is this English? <laughs> yes. Easement. And on the other hand, an easement is where is a non possessory right. Where, for instance, mm. um, you, you have a right to, to views or to light. And someone comes up and builds ah, a, a build, uh, puts up something that completely. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> blocks you from okay. you natural know, light. Natural light, or it could also be that uh, I think this um, is a lot in the village where mm -hmm. there is a natural water spring, mm -hmm. and uh, we could pass through someone's land to go and collect the water. Yes. But if someone one day and uh, says that you can no longer pass through my land, but then that is the only way to access the natural water spring, yes. which supplies the village with water. Yes, you can come to the tribunal. Who? The person who's the owner of the land. No, not the owner. The of person the land. who wants to go and get the water yes. can go to the tribunal and say, and "This say, we've been walking." But sorry, Doctor, yes. you're walking through somebody's private property to ap to approach this public resource. Yes. Isn't it? Public natural resource. Yes. Um, so who would go to the tribunal? Go to the tribunal and say, force this person to allow <laughs> us, it's their private property, to allow us access to this public resource? You are not forcing the person to allow you. This is something that you've been doing since, uh, you know, for Time generations mm. and generations. Mm. So you've acquired an unpossessory right to this property. You don't own that property. You don't own that land, that uh, path that mm -hmm. you pass through, mm -hmm. it's not public road, mm -hmm. but it is a right that has crystallized and you cannot just take it away. So, and, and, and that is the same thing with, uh, you know, someone who blocks you from, from light completely. You don't have, everybody has a right to do whatever they want, they, they want within their property. Mm. But if whatever the person does in their property completely changes, you know, Either the you know the kind of views that you had bought your property for you are you know, or uh, light completely that you can't access light and all that, then you can have you can challenge that in court, and uh, in the tribunal, and the tribunal will make a determination to say whether huh. you know uh, there is have, an easement. I think I have a case. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, let me see where I live. Huh? Mm. Uh, someone, it's it's a, I don't know what you call it. When it rains, I live at a bottom of like a hill. So someone has constructed a house and fenced it. And the water used to naturally flow mm. through the bottom of the hill uh, into a seasonal river. Yeah. So now because he has put a wall, it has caused where I live to flood. But he says, this is my, my, property. my property. And I've put a wall. But the neighbors are 
a floody and we're afraid of El Nino. Actually, right now as we speak, mm. there's a lot of running all over the neighborhood and people are trying to so, I don't know what they are so doing. So if if you remove this wall that problem wouldn't be there. The water would, would flow. There. Mm-hmm. It would not be there. So is it do I have a case? to build a well, wall uh, and leave a passage for the water to pass it by? It is possible and that's what we are pushing for but he seems very stubborn about us breaking his wall. Well, I'll not make any further comments, otherwise I'll have to yes. recuse myself if you come before me. Mm. But ah. uh, then uh, you have a general idea about easements ah. and indeed... It's the sort of case that one could, ah. could bring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so this kind of makes sense. So then this is what uh, my initial question, that there could be then thousands of cases, yes. <laughs> Dr. Arena, that would come before the tribunal hmm. because people have been dealing with things. A road is constructed, there used to be hawkers on the side of the road whose now sheds were removed as a result of that and they according to what you're saying what did you call it a non-possessor possessory non-possessory right, right. non-possessory right mm-hmm. to that place because they've been buying and selling creating a livelihood on that road you've decided to come and construct road and you've said now this area where you've been will be beautification you no longer have access to. Is this one of the things? <laughs> well, well, it's it's it's, it's slightly that's slightly different because well, it goes into you know planning and mm, city and mm. uh, uh, the right of mm. our county governments to do this. Yeah, mm. and uh, they have other mechanisms for grievance uh, okay. settlement. I think through within the mechanisms of the county, and then after that, if you're still dissatisfied, you could go somewhere else. But <laughs> There are, mm. you know, similar similar situations sure. where the tribunal could have just. So, are there prerequisites that you look at, like a mm. pre-list that you say, look, these are the things that we would say meet the threshold to come to the tribunal? Because I can um, envision a situation whereby everybody and their uncle is going to come with cases whereby it has something to do with what we were used to doing before and what we cannot do anymore on this particular land. Would you see through and say if it meets threshold one, two, three, four, five, six, then these will be heard before? the tribunal how do you know what cases to take and what to to not because i'm sure like nirima there are many people who say ah (laughs) this tribunal we're waiting for you now you are here we're bringing our case well uh the cases will be filed before tribunal and the same way they are filed before court and sometimes uh, the tribunal or the court would look at the case and say well uh this looks like there's a problem here but unfortunately it's not something that we can adjudicate upon and uh, the judiciary through the chief justice's um, social transformation through access to justice uh, uh, this access to justice it also follows what is referred to as a multi-door uh, policy mm-hmm. where for instance if you file something wrong before the the tribunal mm-hmm. We can look at it, and bef- and because you know the tribunal is uh, has to enhance access to justice, then we can tell you that what you filed before us probably belongs to another tribunal. Okay. That is, you know, mm. not shutting the door on you, but just referring l- you, l- telling you that you should file this before the National Environment Tribunal. Okay. If it's a question of uh, you know the environment and and resources in regard to that, so that is also a way to to you know foster access to justice not necessarily uh, shutting the door on someone but there's a possibility that you will get cases before you mm-hmm. that are not your business mm. and you just have to either advise the parties that you can file this complaint in a in a different jurisdiction or we do not have when we look at the law because when a case comes before you you have to look at the law and determine whether you have jurisdiction and uh, jurisdiction is found in the law. Does the Land Act or any other law give you powers to adjudicate over a question like this? For instance, in, in regard to an easement, would this be an easement? Mm. Would the definition of an easement also cover, you know, certain other issues that, you know, uh, are not uh, necessarily thought to be, you know, uh, outrightly to be an easement mm. so you have to you know uh, make a determination at that stage and the first thing to do is determine whether you have jurisdiction Mm-mm. yes mm-hmm. you know this is one of the most interesting conversations i've had regarding the law and why i'm saying it's interesting is because it, it sheds light in an area that has hitherto been very gray mm-hmm. like the cases we read about and we talk about Say, for instance, people are supposed to be compensated 
when the SGR was constructed. Yes. And you hear that some were not compensated. Mm. There was this amount. National Land Commission had this to say. A lot of fluff and a lot of dust about it. I am waiting to see how some of these things will be resolved. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It will make for interesting reading and hearing. Mm. Yes. Yeah. We, look, we look forward to, to make uh, determinations that will, you know, restore confidence in, you know, uh, problem resolving mechanisms within mm. the, the judiciary. Yeah. As an almost final one, will you be looking at cases that have some history? Um, uh, because people might come and say, well, okay, this has been tied up in the courts forever and there's been no adequate adjudication over it. And now here is this tribunal. Can you bring a case that has been wrapped up in legalese and the, you know, the law forever and say, well, now that the tribunal is here, this is clearly a cut and dry case for the tribunal. What kind of um, statutory limitations will you be looking at when it comes to cases here? Um of course, there is a requirement that you are you should appeal to the tribunal, you know, 30 days after a decision has been made. Mm -hmm. However, uh, and even this uh, this would happen in any other court where circumstances, where certain circumstances, extenuating circumstances, uh, that a party comes to court and says, you know, I seek leave to file out of this period because. You know, we have been embroiled mm. in a dispute over even Forever. ownership yes. of the property that was taken. Because uh, before you can even uh, determine whether the compensation was sufficient, parties could be, you know, disputing on who owns this property. In the first place. Mm. And that is not uh, within our mandate. That they have to go to another court. So they would have been stuck in the environment and land court for years trying to determine who was the right party to be compensated? And then when eventually the, the Environment and Land Court says, you are the right party to be compensated, it is five years down the line. Mm. You cannot shut the door. You can't shut the door. Yeah. It'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. We'd love you to, you know, give us feedback on how this happens. And it looks to me like that thing when you open the gates and there will be hundreds of cases that come before the uh, before the tribunal and how you're going to be able to to sort that out so i mean i think it's very interesting and seeing opening the door and access um to this kind of uh, justice then plays out dr nabel orina thank you for being here with us the chairperson of the land acquisition tribunal opening its doors to kenyans uh, in when a few days, a week, months. Okay, and we'll get more about that as we go along. Thank you for being a guest on Kenya's Biggest Conversation today. Thank you for And we'll talk again very soon into the future. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.